Okay, we are ready. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Chris, first of all, tell me, uh, tell me where you grew up and what life was like where you grew up. Um, I grew up in Mapleton, Utah, and it was good. Life was really, really good. Um, I have a pretty big family. Now in Utah, there's a lot of space, and our house happened to be like right by a mountain. So me and my brothers had a lot of time to be outside, up on the mountain, just having fun. And I'm great parents. I have really, really good parents, and they always were doing things for me and my brothers and sisters to allow us to kind of, you know, follow our dreams or, you know, go and if I had a basketball game, they would take me to it or pay for me to be in this league or that league. And they did the same for every single one of us. It was, it was really good. Where do you fall in line with your siblings? Um, I have an older sister, an older brother than me, and then a little brother and a little sister. So I'm right in the middle. Right in the middle. Mm -hmm. You always hear those middle, middle child jokes. Do you have yeah. any middle child issues? <laughs> no. It's funny. I hear people say that and it's like, oh, life is pretty good. Yeah. When was the first time you picked up a basketball? Do you recall? Oh, there's a picture of me with the basketball in my hand when I'm probably like one and a half. I'm s I don't know if I could walk yet. I'm sitting there with a diaper on and I have a little plastic ball shooting it in this little hoop. So it was good. When do you first remember loving basketball? Um, probably, I remember playing basketball in elementary and loving it, going out elementary at recess and just, I liked it because I was good at it, but I remember really, really starting to love basketball about seventh grade. I remember going to, probably actually more about sixth grade, going to, you know, Bantam League games and just, we started winning and I all of a sudden got this love for winning and I realized I could get that feeling playing basketball all the time. Were you a, a center at that at that time? Point guard. Point guard. You yeah. started as a point guard because you were you were smaller. Mm -hmm. Tell us what your height was in uh, ninth grade. Ninth grade, there's a few different heights, but going into ninth grade, I was about five nine, and by the end of it, I was I was up in the six feet, probably about six feet six one maybe if I was lucky. But yeah, and so I was point your, guard. And then you hit your height. Tell us when again. Um, so my freshman year, like I said, I'd been about got up to about 6'1", and then my sophomore year, I think I got up to about 6'7", and then my junior year, I think I finally peaked about 6'9". So they say I grew about 10, 10 inches in a year and a half, which was quite an adventure. What did your mother think of that? Uh, a lot of shoes. A lot of shoes for sure. A lot of hand-me-downs. How many did you go through in a year? Um, I went through four pairs of shoes my eighth grade year. That's when my feet grew. and. Um, then when I started to grow, I think my mom, there was no more hand-me-downs because I started to outgrow my older brother. So I actually had to go buy clothes, which was <laughs> And your shoe size is what? I wear a 15, 16, just depending on the brand or the shoe. And that, is that what you wore in high school? Yep, that's what I wore in that high school. Is, those are hard to find. They are. Those are not easy you to find. I love the internet. Um, talk about high school. I know you say your love was about sixth grade, but you go into high school and you really became a great player in high school. But you, I, I understand Let's see, tell, let's go through all the injuries you had in high, in high school. Um, my freshman year, I actually broke my arm the day before varsity tryouts. And I remember I was crushed because I had worked, I actually had this goal because the varsity team was going to go to Florida. So I put up a picture of Florida in my room because I wanted to be on the varsity team so I could go. And it was the day before someone took my legs out from under me and I stuck my arm out and landed on my wrist and broke my wrist. And I remember thinking like, there it goes, there goes everything. But I showed up to tryouts with a broken arm anyway. And my coach just grabbed me and was like, oh, you're already on the team. Don't worry about it. Oh, nice. So it was, it was scary for a little bit. but. So how long were you out? Six weeks. It wasn't too long. It wasn't like a really bad break. But it was broken, and I had to have a cast on. I actually think I just wrapped it up and played a little bit. Not a lot, but. Not on your non-shooting hand then? No, it was on my oh, right hand. it was on hand. your shooting hand. Yeah. Okay, your freshman year. Uh -huh. Any more? Injuries, or is that it? Um, freshman not year? my freshman year, that was it. Sophomore year. Sophomore year, I had a goal. I wanted to start um, varsity. And I probably had this, the summer where I worked the hardest I've ever worked. I was in the gym literally from 8 o'clock to noon every day. And um, my foot just started to hurt, but I wanted to play. And long story short, I had a stretch fracture in my foot. I did start varsity, but threw in a little, little kink. A big one, actually. I ended up having to get surgery. He was out for, in all, about seven months. After the season? You, or was it? I was out for, I think, about eight weeks during the season. So I missed the middle part, the middle beginning, and then I got surgery the day after the state tournament. Wow. So, so eight weeks in between then seven months after. 
Yeah. Junior Some, year. Something like that. Junior year was relatively good. It was a good year for me. It was a lot of just getting back and trying to get my legs back under me from that foot surgery because I was out so long. But it was a good year. I don't remember any injuries that year. Uh, we had a really good season, and unfortunately we took second. But Senior year. Senior year was a pretty good year, I guess you could say. There's a couple injuries. <laughs> um, I uh, broke my... I got a fracture in my right finger at the very beginning of the season in practice. Uh, my finger got stuck on someone's jersey. And I remember I heard it like pop. And I was just like, man, that really hurts. But I just kept playing through it. But I just got swollen and sore. And the ligament actually popped the bone off the finger. Well, I guess which is it's pretty common, but it was pretty sore. I could still move it. I could still do things. But I kind of lost the touch because I, it was just weird. It was a weird feeling. Did you miss any games? Not with that. I actually didn't tell anyone about that for a while. I remember our team was kind of struggling, and my coach, and I was kind of struggling. My coach came in, and he's like, what's wrong? Like, and I was like, well, I think I broke my finger about two months ago. <laughs> and so, anyway. You didn't even tell your coach. No, I just. Now, what about the eye? The eye, that was interesting. Um, I got poked in the eye in the first minute of a game against Orem High School, I remember, and I couldn't see for like four hours. And anyway, I got a concussion from it as well, and I had blood behind my eye. It was just weird. It was a freak thing. It was one of those weird things. I don't even really know what happened. I just know I grabbed a rebound, turned around to pass it, and the next thing I know, I couldn't see for a while. But Did you still keep playing with that? No. I'm actually, because of the concussion, I missed, I missed the rest of that game. I think I missed two, maybe three games after that. But it took me a little bit to get over that concussion. It was it was rough. I thought I would be good and start to run, and I want to be good. And so that was that was probably the besides breaking your finger. That was a pretty big setback that season because that was during region and when games were really important. But my team did well. You won state, didn't you? Yeah, we won the state tournament. We were ten and ten going into the state tournament. I think we were like a fourth seed. I'm not even sure. We. We were the number one ranked team at the beginning of the year. We went in as like a fourth seed, and then we won, took state. Wow. Things came together for us. We were blessed. It was good. You were recruited by a lot of different teams. Um, was BYU always on the top of your list? Um, to be 100% honest, probably not. I remember when Coach Rose got the job at BYU, my interest peaked. Like I was like, okay, like Coach Rose is a good coach. BYU is doing well. Before that, I was never really into BYU basketball. But um, then they started to do good, and I was interested. But I had a lot of other schools show me more interest at the beginning. And so I just, I didn't really, I think it's one of those things where I didn't really know if I was good enough to play at BYU, just because you don't know. You know, I was a young high school. And then anyway, it all worked out, and I had a lot of schools offer me. And BYU came in and offered me. And I, it, I mean, when they offered me, it took like a week, and then I committed here. What were some, who were some of the other schools that offered, that came in early? Um some schools that came in early there was some I had some Pac-10 schools that came in early and some ACC schools that came in early and I think they kind of like the glamour of that is one reason why it took me I guess a little bit longer to to admit that I wanted to go to BYU but um, I know Arizona State Washington State Arizona those schools recruited me um, some of them a lot harder than others but and then ACC Virginia and North Carolina State recruited me and some other big schools. I had like uh, West Virginia recruited me, and then their coach went to Michigan and he recruited me there. Um, there's a lot. Those are the bigger ones. I remember the coach at Washington State. He was he was really forward for a long time. He's a good guy, and so that was that was tempting just because that was the year they actually were second in the nation, and so I was like, oh. That but, would be very tempting, yeah. yeah. But, so you then yeah. you go um, commit to BYU. You have a great freshman year, really a, a solid year. Did you play in every game? Uh, yeah. Played I, in every game. Uh -huh. Okay. No injuries. No injuries. How would you describe your freshman year? I loved it. I mean, it's definitely hard going from, you know, pretty much my whole life I'd been the guy on every basketball team I'd ever played in and I played on, and then I got to BYU. And I knew that I was going to have to change the way I played in order to play. I knew there was things I would have to do. I just didn't know what they would be. And so I just kind of started to watch the team and figure out what I needed to do to really help us out. And that's what I did. W tell us what that was. Let's, let's hold for just a minute okay. to get the studio clear. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. We need 
was like, who's this guy creeping over here? Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, it's just, I was thinking it was somebody from the uh, basketball office or something. Okay. We're ready, Craig? Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what was it that you had to change to, you say, to be able to play? Um, well, I noticed one thing that I really could bring to the team is just go out and play defense and rebound. And I know that, you know, a lot of Division one athletes were scores in high school I relied to score on, but I knew I didn't have to do that to play, but I had to go out and do, do the little things, do the simple things, and rebound, play defense, like I said, hit open shots, which is always important, and get the ball to the open guy, and that's what I did, and I found myself on the floor a lot. That's not a bad thing. No. <laughs> but no injuries, that's a good thing. No injuries. You, you go on a mission, was there ever a doubt in your mind that you wanted to serve a mission? Um, no, I made up my mind a long, long, long time ago, and actually that was probably one of the best things I ever did, just due to the fact that when I did start getting recruited, there was schools that, some of the schools I, I named earlier were, were excited to recruit me until I told them I was going on a mission, and then it was like, well, it's either us or the mission. And it was really easy to be like, well, I'm going on a mission. And um, so going on a mission was a really, really easy choice, because I made it way before I was 19. I always try to teach your kids, yeah, make those decisions before those things pop up in front of you. And, of course, I have to ask you about the stabbing. Just briefly tell us what happened. And um, I, I remember, you know, you said you were back out. Were you the next day? I'm pretty close. Next day, maybe the next day. Two days after. It was, it was well, just a day tell us briefly what happened and uh, um, where you were and what happened. I mean, it can be just real quick. I was, I was in an area called Auburn, and it was a suburb of Parramatta. It was dominated by Middle Eastern culture. A lot of Middle Eastern refugees lived there. It was very, very Islamic, a lot of Muslim people there. And um, we were just walking home one night. I mean, we always got grief from, you know, the teenagers and you know, the young adults there. They'd always give us crap about being um, United States citizens and Christians. And long story short, it was just really weird feeling for about a week. And I remember talking to my companion about it. And, um, we were walking home one night, and I was actually on exchanges. I was with my district leader, and some guys walked around the corner, and I got punched in the face. And then, um, yeah, I got in a brawl with him, and then the, his friend attacked my companion. And before he knew it, there was me and a couple guys, my companion, and a couple guys, and we we're all kind of just in a jumbled mess. And I got kicked in the head, I remember, several times, the head and the ribs. and. My companion actually got the worst of it, and I, there was, I was on the ground getting kicked, and there was a car that came to dro drive by, and he didn't stop. He just drove around us, and another car did that, and I was just thinking to myself, like, when are, is somebody going to help us? Because we were defenseless. And then the third car came, broke it up, and I remember getting up and looking around, and it was, it was, a, pretty, it was a pretty crazy sight to see, you know, blood all over the ground, and see my companion just standing there. And, he actually he got stabbed in the leg and in the hand. He had a, his wounds; they were bad. They were really, really bad. And I remember thinking, I didn't even know I had been stabbed or cut or whatever happened. And then the ambulance came, and we got to the hospital, and I couldn't stand up to get out of the ambulance. They had rolled my companion in, and I couldn't stand up. My back was sore. I didn't have a concussion. They told me, but the guy's like, "Oh, come on, stand up," and I couldn't do it. And anyway, long story short, they put me in a wheelchair and wheeled wheeled us in, and they actually wouldn't let us use the phone either. And then an EMT came in who happened to be a member of the church, and he had a cell phone, so we could call my mission president. But they wouldn't let me use the phone because, I'm assuming because I was a patient, I just didn't even realize it. And then I heard him say that, you know, there was an intensive, par intensive care patient who had been stabbed in the kidney. And I was like, ooh. And they rolled into bed and put me on the bed and took me away, and it was me. And actually, I didn't get stabbed in the kidney. That's just what they thought might have happened. That's why I probably they thought why I maybe couldn't stand up, but I'd got cut in the back or stabbed, whatever you want to call it. And my companion, he had been cut in the hand and on the leg, and actually I think on the arm as well. And yeah, he got it way worse than I did. And luckily we were both all right, and it worked out. It was crazy. It was a crazy experience just to realize that things like that actually could happen. But it was a it was a big testimony builder. It really was. In what way? Well, one, we went back the next day with my mission president, and it wasn't the next day, it was a couple of days later, and it was just a really spiritual experience to know that we'd been protected, and I mean, to have the realization that people are actually trying to, I guess, 
some people would say they're actually trying to kill us, hurt us, whatever they're doing, there was a knife involved. And to actually, to realize that we were protected and we were doing the things that we we're supposed to be doing. And that was a, actually kind of set the tone for the rest of my mission, for me to go out and just give it my best every day, knowing there was no fear after that. Because, I mean, the worst had already pretty much happened. Yeah, couldn't, get, couldn't go downhill no. from there for sure. Yeah. So you come home and, uh, and then tell us how you first injured the knee. Um, I actually sprained my ankle the first day back from my mission. I wasn't even cleared to play yet. And then they said that's probably what happened with the knee. As I was, I sprained my ankle bad. I was out for like three months. And they said that it probably limping on my, limping on my left, because my left ankle limping on my right knee, combined with being out of shape from the mission and then trying to push it to get back in shape, it just probably just wore down. And I had noticed it when the season started. It just started to get sore and swollen, and it took a little while. To, I tried to stretch it out with our trainer, and it wouldn't. Nothing would happen. And then there was one game I just couldn't even really play. I tried to, and the next game I tried to play, and after, after that game, that was, I think it was right before Christmas. It was just swollen, just big and swollen, and finally told the doctor, and that was pretty much it. And after that, I got an MRI, and I had to get surgery. And what did they do in that first surgery? Um, they did microfracture surgery. Oh, that was the microfracture surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought, okay. And then the second one was the clean out. Yeah. Okay, so microfracture was in 2010? Yes. December of 2010. Okay. It would, the actual surgery was in January. January. Mm -hmm. Long recovery. You come back this season, try it, get swollen again, and it they go back and clean it out? Yep. Okay. Medical red shirt for this year, correct? Um, last year. Last year. For last year. Do you, I understand there's a possibility of getting a second. Is that true? Um, I don't know. I've heard that you can get two in, in basketball. I don't know why, but anyway. Who knows? Yeah. So how frustrating has this been for you? Um, pretty frustrating at times. I mean, to get the, have to have two knee surgeries in, I guess, two seasons. And I haven't really played basketball in four years. And so it's kind of... That can be really frustrating to think back, like, man, I haven't even played really in like four years. Like the last time I really played was before my mission. And I know it can be frustrating, but then I just remind myself that, man, things could be a lot worse. I'm sitting here complaining because I can't play basketball. And there's a lot of people in this world who can't play basketball for a lot worse reasons than me or don't have the opportunity or are worried about feeding their family. Like, honestly, things like that will go through my head just to, like bring me back down to reality that this isn't so bad. I'm getting my school paid for. I'm at BYU. I'm still part of the team. Things could be, I still have both legs. Like, I honestly think about that. Like, I still have my right leg. It works great. Just might not be ready to play basketball. That's not so bad. How are you feeling today? Good. I feel really good. My knee actually feels really good. I just need to get it stronger, which might be a process because it was never really strong anyway. Are you confident you'll be able to play this next season? Yeah. For the first time in... A long time, my body feels good, <laughs> really good. Did you ever get to the point where you, you, when we talk about all the injuries in high school and then that, the stabbing and then your knee, just go, all right, I, this wasn't meant to be, I need to move on, ever get to that point? Um, yeah, but then I look back at all the times where I had trials before, I guess if you want to call them trials, but um, there's always good things that came after, really, really good things. Um, if I would have quit my senior year, we wouldn't have won the state championship, and that definitely came through my mind. I was just so frustrated because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. But if I had quit on my mission, I wouldn't have accomplished the goals that I had on my mission. And that, I remember thinking about that because on my mission, I wanted to baptize a family more than anything. And I know everyone told us, I got told before my mission we were going to be in Australia. We wouldn't really baptize. You were definitely not going to baptize families. And so I prayed for that for a long time, and I got stabbed. and. You know, things happen. It's like a man. I wanted to get down and just kind of give up, or whatever. But I'd been on my mission for 21, almost 22 months, and we found a family and baptized them in in the richest, one of the richest areas of my mission, where people told us we absolutely wouldn't baptize. And I look back at that experience and just thinking, man, if I would have quit, if I wouldn't have tried, then I would have never got to do that. I'd never got to see, have that blessing, and see that happen to that family and it's the same thing every time there's a trial you just got to work through it and there's always something greater at the other end and I've learned that I've learned that from high school through my mission and now and I, I mean it's good life's good 
That's that's a really great. Uh, when you're talking about not quitting, do you remember a time in your childhood where you learned lesson, a valuable lesson about not quitting that kind of set the stage for for not quitting your senior year or not quitting on your mission? Um, probably playing basketball with my older brother. Uh, my older brother, he's awesome. He's a huge, huge part of my life, and he's four years older than me. And um, he would always let me and my little brother play basketball with him or play sports with him and his friends. And I remember going out there and just, I mean, you couldn't really quit. I mean, you, I guess you could, like no one was gonna stop you. They'd probably actually be glad if we did because we were whipping up on them and we're four years younger. And, um, but I remember going out there and that, playing with older kids, they did bring a sense of toughness, I guess. And I don't know if that's why I just haven't quit. I think it's probably a little bit in the blood too. I'm kind of prideful as well. And I'd always think, think about my family and what they would think, or my grandparents, what they would think, and and I don't know. It just has never really been in me. I've never ever thought about quitting ever, and I'm grateful you know, because I mean my life would be a different story. But I don't think there's really an option to quit. And I'm not saying that. I mean I think there's sometimes there's times to move on. I wouldn't call that quitting, but um, I definitely don't think that's ever been an option in my life up to this point. How would you like, um, we talked about your story all through up here to BYU, how would you like your basketball story to end one day? What do you, how do you vis envision that? Um, well, ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to play professionally. I remember that was, that was always the goal, and um, I still want to. I still want to be able to go play professionally, but more importantly, since I've been here at BYU, especially over the last couple of months, I've gained a lot of a lot of, I guess you could say, a sense of pride to be here at BYU and to be involved with the BYU basketball program and Coach Rose. And more than anything, I guess the biggest thing that I could ask for with, with basketball would just to be, to accomplish everything that we can here at BYU, even before I started thinking on, because there's a lot of people who just don't live in the moment and they're always thinking ahead or always worrying about the past. And that's something I've learned as well through all this is you have to just focus on the here and now. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday and you can't stress about tomorrow. You gotta make today count. And I think that's really what I wanna do with basketball is make every day count, especially while I'm here at BYU and do the best we can do. And um, I wanna be a big part of that. And you know, this season, I guess the way I could do that is by being good at picking up those chairs. <laughs> and, and seriously, that's just kinda the attitude I have, but I'm going to take that attitude with me while I'm playing to, to make every game count and to do the best we can while I'm here at BYU and not really focus on other things, which I think can be very distracting for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of really quick questions, just so I can tag the story. It won't be in the story. I know you were, you're really close with Brandon Davies and mm -hmm. that you were really integral in helping him get through a really difficult situation. How do you think you helped him? Honestly, I think the way I helped Brandon didn't happen last year. I think it happened when he was a freshman and I was a junior at Provo High. I mean, Brandon's story is pretty incredible himself. He didn't, there's a lot of people who weren't willing to give him a chance. They just wanted to, they saw this big, long, people probably would have called him even uncoordinated back then. He just never played basketball. And um, anyway, he got to high school. He didn't have very many friends. And he is actually friends with Kyle because they played together. And Kyle is, Kyle, my whole family is really nice. I would consider them very nice people, especially to the, the underdogs. And so Kyle was always really nice to Brandon. Anyway, me and Brandon kind of, we really bonded his freshman year, I would say. I was always there to help him out. He was on the, I think he was on the varsity team as a freshman to try to help him progress, you know, to be in a practice with our actual coach so he could help him out. And anyway, there's times where guys were mean to him or guys would try to, you know, make fun of him. And I honestly think it's because everyone knew he was going to be this good and they just kind of wanted to beat him down while they could. And not to toot my own horn, but I was always nice to him. Like I always wanted to help him out and I always liked him. And I think it was, though, it was back in those days, in those high school days where we played together, where we really became, where it really put me in a position to help him this past year. Great. And, you um, started that friendship early. Yeah, and, and it he was. he knew he could come to you. Kind yeah, of thing. it was, and he honestly is more. I would say he's more of a brother than a friend. He's at my house all the time. He's in my ward. There's been periods of time where I would say he lives with us because he just 
comes and sleeps over for an extended period of time. No, I mean, he, he'll be at my house when me and Kyle aren't there. He'll just go and hang out with my parents and my little sister. And that all started a long, long time ago, way before I would say he really needed someone. And that's how I was able to help him, was just by being nice to him when he, when he needed it a long time ago. Perfect. And quickly, Taysom Hill, your, your uh, companion on your mission, what do yep. you think of him? I love him. He's a good guy. Um, he's a really good guy. I actually was able to train him. Uh, he was my last companion on my mission. And he's actually my companion when we baptized that family that I was talking about earlier. And I um, know he's a really good guy. He's a really hard worker. And I'm, I'm glad he's here at BYU. And he's actually my roommate now, which is, it's been fun. And, you know, I'm just really blessed. Talked a lot about a, a lot about a lot of good people that I know and I'm able to associate with, and he's one of them. Think he'll be a, a starter one day? Yeah, I would. I would assume he would be just because of his his work ethic. I know he's. You know, yeah, I've never actually seen a live game. I've seen some highlights and heard some things. I think he has the talent and the skill, but the one thing I know that he has is the work ethic, and that's a huge thing, especially at this level. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Craig. Thanks so much. Um, did you ever throw the